Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. So book of the week this week is The Wisdom of Crowds by James Sirwecki. So the idea of social proof and the way crowds work has always been fascinating to me. Um, social proof is a cognitive bias we all fall unto, into when the crowd actually is really into something. And I figured that it's not it's it's too easy to dismiss that as a cognitive bias that you know you fall into like a mental trap there has to be a reason to it and uh, the author here has done fantastic and very in-depth research to show that you know over history it's been shown that the uh, inte collective intelligence of a crowd of say average people will always trump the collective intelligence of say a few elite intelligent individuals and why is that so in Reading this book, there is an interesting takeaway that I found that is incredibly applicable to any company, whether it's getting uh, you know, market research, trying to get voice a customer, even getting a better idea internally. So when it comes to finding a very um, helpful and intelligent crowd decision, there are three things that are really important that, ha that have to be intact. Independence, diversity, and decentralization. So. First one is independence. As you know, there's an old saying or theory, the Heisenberg uncertainty, uncertainty uh, theory, which is the moment you try and measure a particle that's in space traveling, you then have influenced that particle and changed its tra trajectory. You can take that same concept in physics and apply it to social proof and dealing with a crowd. So if you take a crowd of people and say put them in a room where they can be close to each other and influence each other's trajectories when they're being measured or, or surveyed, that can cause an issue. So the last thing that you want to do is get, let's say, a group of people in a room and say, hey, do you think this is a good idea, yes or no, and people raise their hands. Because they're going to have some kind of influence on each other because now they're not acting independently. You won't get the best answer. If you get a group of people together to guess the number of M&Ms in a jar, if they all share their answers together and talk about it, you're not going to get a great answer. But if you have each one of those individuals answer independently and then average those numbers out, those answers actually almost always beat out the best intellectual guesses. So independence is really important. Number two, diversity. You know, uh, a great uh, uh, executive that I know, Chris Sells, who's a fantastic VP in medical device, once told me when, he, when it comes to recruiting executive leadership that he always wants to make sure to get unique and independently thinking people, people with different biases. Why is that important? Because when you have different people with different diverse backgrounds, right, different approaches to a problem, you have people who don't have the same frame. Because if you have the same frame, you're all looking at the picture the same way. But you have people who come in with different diverse frames, then you essentially come up with a better solution and you're able to see the full picture. And that was something that Sells was really getting at when he advised me many years ago about assembling a team of diverse people with different biases. And now the last piece is decentralization. So the idea of decentralization is this, is that when you try and get people to do a task and think together, but you centralize that task and try and guide them in the process and work, you're not gonna end up with the best solution. That's why, in my opinion, some of these larger corporations who try and have startup ventures don't do as well because the nature of these organizations is that once, once something gets to a point of being very good and ready to scale, they're very good at putting process down and being conservative and traditional, which is important when it comes to scaling, but when it comes to come up with a new and unique solution, you cannot wrangle it in with a process and centralize that kind of thought process. So that's why it's important that when you get you know, a group of people together who are diverse thinkers and independent when they're creating those uh, thought processes, that that whole process is decentralized in the sense that you give them a problem to find a solution to and then allow them all to work independently with their own diverse backgrounds and biases to come up with a solution. You always come up with a better better one. So again, fantastic book. I would say that for the theoretical part of it, the first half of the book covers all that. It talks about the uh, independence, uh, diversity, and decentralization. And then the second half of the book, the author really backs up uh, all this uh, uh, research by sh going through a lot of case studies. And based on your industry, you can get a lot just from those case studies. So again, uh, The Wisdom of a Crowd, great book, highly recommended. Go check it out, and as always, 
Happy Wisdom Wednesday, and I'll see you next week. That was good. We're done. <laughs>